Hello everyone. Welcome to the first part of the competitive programming in Python series. Today we'll be learning about breadth first search, also known as PFS, and uh, it is regarded as one of the simplest graph traversal algorithms. And uh, personally, I find it much more simpler than depth first search, though both of them have very different applications. So let's get started on what BFS is. Here are some of the things you need to know about breadth first search. It works both for very well for both directed and indirected graphs. Uh, BFS uses a queue data structure to process the nodes. In Python, this can be uh, the FIFO operation can be easily achieved by using a double ended queue from the collection library. And you can use a pop left method to pop the first node from the queue data structure. Or you can just get away by using the lists pop zero method as well, the default lists pop zero method as well, though it is a bad practice because this actually works in the order of O of N when compared to the double ended queue, which uh, achieves as a no one operation. But I've never really gotten a TLE by using the pop zero method. Whenever I've implemented BFS for any of the graph questions, usually asked in competitive programming, though you should keep in mind that it is bad practice. Uh, for unweighted graphs, and uh, this is the most important takeaway from this slide, is that this the breast first search can be used to compute the shortest path from the source node to the destination node. This is very important and this should be a takeaway from this slide and this is based on this simple premise that breadth first search always discovers nodes at a distance of k all the words nodes at a distance of k it visits all the nodes at a distance of k before visiting nodes at a distance of k plus one this is the working mantra behind uh, breadth first search and that's why this mainly uses the shortest path to discover the shortest path for unweighted graphs. For weighted graphs, you have several uh, algorithms like uh, the Dijkstra's uh, shortest path algorithm or uh, the Floyd version algorithm or Bellman for depending on your application. But for unweighted graphs, this simple algorithm just does the job to find the shortest path from the source node to the uh, destination node. And the overall time complexity of this BFS, well implemented, that is is O V plus E, where V is the total number of nodes, and E is the total number of edges in the graph. And if you use an adjacent Z list, and if you got it well implemented, this can be achieved in the time complexity of O big O of V plus E. So that's the theory part of BFS. Now let's look at the code walkthrough, and also let's just look at how BFS works in general. So this is how BFS works in a nutshell. So we start with the source node and we mark it as visited. And I'll be adding the source node to the queue. And we start the BFS procedure by popping a node from the queue. We explore all the nodes from that pop node that are unvisited. We mark them one by one and then we add it to the queue and we do the same thing and that is Till we are done completely exploring all the nodes. So we popped one from the queue and uh, let's explore all the children of one that are unvisited. So it happens to be two. I mark two as visited, I'll add it to the queue. The next node that is unvisited is three. Mark it as visited, add it to the queue. The next node that is visited, that is unvisited is four. I mark it as visited, add it to the queue. So now I'm done exploring all the children of one. So let me just mark it with black. Time to pop the next node from the queue. We popped out one already. So the next node that this we popped is two. And uh, let's visit all the children of two that are unvisited. So one is already visited. So the only child that is to, that is unvisited is five. So let's mark five as visited. And I'm going to add five to the queue. So
So since we popped two, I'd write that in the BFS order. So next element, so we are completely done exploring all the children for two. And uh, let's just mark it with black to indicate that I've completely visited all the children from there. So the next node that will be popped will be three. So let's pop out three. And uh, we have to explore all the children from three that happen to be unvisited. So three has no child remaining that is unexplored, that, are, that is unvisited. So three is complete. So three can be marked as black. The next node that will be popped is going to be four. And uh, four has only one child, six that is unvisited. So we go there and we mark six as visited and I'll be adding six to my queue as well. So I'm done completely exploring all the children of four from four. So I can mark four as uh, visited as completed with black. So the next element that will be popped from the queue is going to be five. So I pop out five from my queue and then I write it down in the BFS order. And five, it so happens, has no child remaining that is unvisited. So five is completely explored. Five has been completely explored. So I can mark it as black. Time to pop the next element from the queue. That is six and six will go in the BFS order right after five. So that's six. And six also has no child remaining that is unvisited. So we are complete with the BFS since the queue is empty. And so that is the BFS order one. And then we started with one. We explored two and then all three, then four. And then right after that, this is level one. This is level two. And in level three, we had five and six. So if you can see, the most important property in BFS is that it never visits a node at a distance of k plus one before the k the distance. So let's say this is at a distance k from the source node. It will it'll visit all the nodes that are at a distance k before ever beginning to explore nodes of distance k plus one. So that's why BFS is used as a shortest path algorithm. So let's have a look at the code of BFS now. So here's a code walkthrough of BFS. I'll be using uh, the default dictionary from connections as well as the double ended queue. And uh, to, to maintain my adjacency list, I'll be having something called neighbors and that's gonna be a default dictionary of list. And uh, my add edge method is going to be as follows. It's gonna take in U and V and also let me also keep track of whether my graph is directed or undirected. If it's uh, a, a undirected graph, bidirectional by default is gonna be true. And if it's like, uh, if it's a directed graph, if it's undirected, bidirectional is true. And if it's a directed graph, then bidirectional has to be false. So depending on whether bidirectional is true or not, we'll be making change. We'll be adding U to V, or if it's a if it's an undirected graph, then we'll have to add it both ways. So that's how we maintain the adjacency list, U to V, and if it's uh, undirected, we add it both ways. Now, time for our BFS code. We accept the source node, and uh, I'm going to be having a default dictionary with everything marked to false by default. And uh, let's also maintain our distance so as to compute the shortest distance from the source node to all the nodes. And uh, initially, let me just set all the distance from the source node other than the source 
to infinity so distance of source to source from source to source uh, is going to be zero and uh, visited of source is going to be true source is true and uh, i'm going to be having my q and it's going to be a dq double ended q in python and it'll only have the source node initially so visited of source has been marked to distance of source is true and there you go while there are elements left in my queue i'll pop that node from my queue queue dot pop left so this is to pop the first element of the queue first in first out and let me just explore all the elements from that node and if it has not been visited yet if the visited of that element is false then we explore it i'll mark it as visited then the distance of that v from u from the source node is going to be distance of u plus one and then i also need to maintain the parent pointer from v to u and then the most important thing is to add that element to our queue so that's it so all we do is we pop the element from our queue and then uh, we explore all the items from u that are unexplored and then we add it to the queue then we just maintain the information we need the distance and the parent pointer as well so we mark it as true i'm sorry that is a blunder from end we uh, all the elements that are unexplored we actually mark it as true we add it to our queue and then so that's essentially how BFS works in Python. So to print our order, I'll be printing all the nodes here. So let me also print the other information we'll maintain, like the distance and also our parent point. So let's just verify if it's working correctly. So my So let's let's say there's a, no, a node from one to or there's an edge from one to two, then there's an edge from one to three, then there's an edge from one to four, then two is connected to five, and then we had uh, three wasn't connected to anything. We had four connected to six. So these are our edges. So there were five edges. For I let me just take it in and it's input for I in range. We had five edges, so let me just accept these edges. And I'll be adding it to my graph. And u comma v, it's an undirected graph, so bidirection has to be true. It's set to true by default, so I don't need to give it again. But let's say we want it to be directed. So all we have to do is pass it as false. I think that should work. There you go. Since it's an undirected graph, I added it. And then let me just see if my BFS is working. And my BFS, the source node is 1. Let's see if our code works. OK. We have to maintain uh, the parent pointer and parent of the source node is going to be none because the source node has no parent. So that's about it. So let's see if our BFS is working correctly. So one was explored first, then uh, we visited two, then three, then four, then five, then six. That's perfect. And then we have uh, the distance maintained. The distance of one to one is zero. The distance of two, three, and four is one. The distance of uh, five is two. And distance of six is two that's perfect and then the parent point of information one is pointing to none two is pointing to one three is pointing to one four is pointing to one five is pointing to two and six is pointing to four so that's perfect and that's how i uh, the bfx works and that's how it called bfs in python and that's about it and one last thing do solve p path from spots it's a really cool problem that explores the application of breadth first search and I'm sure you'll enjoy doing it. 
If you're stuck on it, I have the solution attached in the description. So do check it out and have fun solving it. Thank you for watching. Until next time, see you guys.